Good day. Welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Thelma Okuru. Nigerian troops say they have arrested two fleeing key members of the Boko Haram terrorists in Gaidam, Yobe State, Northeast Nigeria. A statement released by the spokesperson of the Nigerian Army, Colonel Sani Usman, said the captured members of the terrorist sect are currently being interrogated. The army also seized two pickup vehicles from the militants. Colonel Usman gave assurance that the troops are fully committed to the fight against Boko Haram terrorists and ensuring security for law-abiding citizens in the troubled areas. The Nigerian military has denied reports stating that about 150 villagers from Kukuwa Gari in Yobe State, northern, northeastern Nigeria, died after members of the Boko Haram sect ambushed the village. Director of Defense Information Colonel Rabi Abubakar said the report was completely false. Spokesperson of the Nigerian Army Colonel Sani Usman also said the stories cannot be substantiated. The media on Tuesday was agog with news that 150 Nigerians drowned in a river and some shot dead after Boko Haram members invaded their community in Kukuwa Gari village in Yubi State last week Thursday. President Muhammad Buhari has dissolved the management team of the Assets Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON. He also approved the appointment of a new executive management team for the corporation. Ahmed Lawan Kuru was named as a new managing director of the corporation to replace Mustafa Chike Obi, while Kola Ayeye, Ebere Chuku Uneze and Aminu Ismail were appointed as the new executive directors of the corporation. The president's spokesperson, Femi Additional, said the appointment take effect from Tuesday, August 18th. President Muhammad Buhari has ordered the Ministry of Communication to provide details to the recent privatization of the Nigerian Telecommunications, NITEL, and its mobile arm, MTEL, to ascertain whether or not Nigeria was shortchanged. Speaking to journalists Tuesday in Abuja, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Communication, Tuji, Oluakpa said the president requested that a memo detailing how the transaction was processed be submitted to him directly. The highly debated transaction was done by the immediate past administration of President Goodluck Jonathan. Oluakpa said the president was also concerned about the possibility of Nigeria not receiving a fair value from the deal. Nintel and Emta were bought by a consortium owned by Sky Bank's chairman. Tunde Ayen, the founder of Sahara Energy, Tony Ko, and two other companies for $242 million in December 2014. Edo State Governor Adams Oshomole has said that out of a total of 162 billion naira, the Nigerian Port Authority MPA generated in a year, only 2 billion naira was remitted. Speaking at the National Delegates Conference of the National Union of Road Transport Workers held in Abuja, Oshamala said those who presided over the affairs of the MPA spent about 160 billion naira out of the total amount the agency generated. Oshamala also reacted to President Muhammadu Buhari's meeting with members of the National Peace Committee, where they advised him to soft pedal on his war against corruption. Oshamala urged the members of the Peace Committee not to diminish their standing in the eyes of the Nigerian public by trying to stand in the way of President Buhari's anti corruption war. Yoba State Governor Alhaji Ibrahim Gaidam has accused the present administration of negligence, saying the state has not received any significant financial support from the federal government. Gaidam said his administration has spent well over 112 billion naira on security related issues following the increasing rate of attacks by Boko Haram members in the state. In a statement issued through his media aide, Abdullahi Bego, the governor said the 150 million donated to the states for security was from the past administration of Good Luck Jonathan and nothing has been donated by the present administration of President Muhammad Buhari. Nigeria has the highest number of displaced people in the world according to the United Nations and the continued rise in the number of displaced persons in Nigeria is largely owing to the destructive activities perpetrated by the terrorist sect Boko Haram in the northeastern part of the country. Speaking at an event organized by the Odua People's Congress in Lagos to commemorate the 2015 United Nations World Humanitarian Day, Professor of Economic Development Program at the North American University of Benin Republic, 
Alfred Agrifine said over 1.5 million people are displaced in Nigeria, adding that there is an urgent need to realize the great extent of responsibility that is associated with this development. Professor Agrifine also called on the government to urgently resolve the issue of insecurity in the northeast of the country and to also intensify the fight against corruption in Nigeria. On his part, founder of Ghani Adam Foundation said there is an urgent need for African leaders to reduce the increasing poverty in the continent. Nigeria, pedigree, by all standards, is it's a rich country, not a poor country at all. Therefore, all things being equal, there should be no poverty in Nigeria, nor should there be anybody described as a less privileged individual in this country. For example, Nigeria is the highest producer of crude oil in the whole of Africa. And number 12 in the world by the 2010 rankings. In 1989, Nigeria was number five in the production of crude oil. Nigeria is also a judge, the largest economy in Africa at present. Therefore, all things being equal, the resources of Nigeria, both manpower and material resources, properly harnessed and directed, all Nigerians should be above the poverty line. Africa and indeed Nigeria is having its fair shares of this global pro problem. According to 2011 estimate from the World Bank, extreme poverty in sub-Saharan Africa has risen over 47 percent. The situation is yet to be abated, with only a few exceptions. Most countries in the continent are caught in poverty trap, with more than half of the population living below the poverty line. And on the less than one dollar per day, poverty is severe in Africa that about 20 out of 20, 25 poorest countries in the world are in Africa. Nigeria is among three of the place of the world where extremely poor who constituted the problem of poverty have been compounded by the pogrom being executed by insurgents in the north eastern part of our country. Let's take a break now. When we come back, we'll look at international and business stories. Don't go away. Hello, you're welcome. You're watching the Funny White Man Show, which is the biggest, the brightest, and the most entertaining show in Africa. Funny you White Man, Funny White Man, Funny White Man, but this way you talk, you're yeah. too much. Yeah. Give me 5,000 man, that's you. You're <laughs> <laughs> too much. So you get to like, make sure you move along the street. Ah, yeah, make sure that they are going girl. You know, my own people, nah, actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fine, it's fun. I enjoy it. And I'm one of those very few. I'm What's forever you? sticking it personal. I will you listen to 160 million Nigerians are corrupt. How? I thought I'm looking for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a growth and this is the time to build business and know the pitfalls and know what to do and what not to do. But there are months where you get business and months... You know how we do, how we do it. We do the way you do Hello, you're welcome. You're watching Trending Matters on the Funny White Man Show. Of course, we will bring you trending issues just to entertain and tickle your fancy. You're welcome back. This is News Now on TV360. To business stories now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has denied accreditation to foreign printers who previously printed checkbooks for some Nigerian banks. In a circular released Tuesday, the Central Bank said foreign-based printers were neither accredited or re-accredited in line with the bank's policy on the domestication of check printing in Nigeria. The Apex Bank has confirmed it has duly notified all accredited printers and issued certificates to them. The CBN says it did this to ensure an efficient payment and settlement system. Oil prices steadied on Wednesday, consolidating after a six-week rout driven by a global oversupply and concerns about falling demand in Asian economies and the United States. U.S. crude oil futures were down 20 cents at 
$42.42 a barrel, but while North Sea Brent crude was down 10 cents at $48.71 a barrel. Oil has lost about a third of its value since June and prices have been hovering just about six years low for the past week. The downward trend has been driven by global oversupply and record stockpile levels. This is according to analysts. Five police say the man suspected of carrying out the deadly bombing of a popular shrine in Bangkok likely had accomplices. Over 20 people were killed and more than 120 people were injured in the blast. Police have released a sketch of the main suspect, a man in a yellow t-shirt who was filmed by security cameras leaving a backpack at the shrine. Prime Minister Prayut Chan Chao has described the incident as the worst ever attack on Thailand. Police say they don't know the suspect's identity or whether he is Thai or a foreigner. A reward of 1 million Thai baht, which is approximately $28,000, is being offered for information leading to the suspect's arrest. There has been no claim of responsibility for the bombing. Meanwhile, the Hindu shrine, popular with tourists and Buddhists, reopened on Wednesday. To sports stories now, former Olympic champion Lord Coe has been elected as the president of the International Association of Athletics Federation, IAAF, at the 50th IAAF Congress in Beijing, China. Coe defeated former Ukrainian pole voter Sergei Bubka in 100, by 115 votes to 92. The former chairman of London 2012, Coe replaces 82-year-old Senegalese Lamin Dayak, who has been in charge of the body for 16 years. He will take office on 31st August after the end of the IAAF World Championships in Beijing 2015. Ko takes over the IAAF at perhaps the most unstable time for athletics in history. Allegations of widespread doping in recent weeks have reduced public confidence in the sport's global governing body to an all-time low. Barcelona defender Gerard Piquet has been given a four-match ban for insulting an assistant referee during Barcelona's Supercopa defeat against Athletic Bilbao. Piquet was sent off in the 55th minute after he shouted obscenities at a linesman for failing to spot what he considered to be a clear offside call. The referee Velasco Caballo responded by giving Piquet a straight red card. Meanwhile, Piquet has already apologized for his actions. Though he claims he did not insult the linesman as otherwise indicated in the referee's report, he would miss matches against Athletic Malaga, Atletico Madrid and Levant. Barcelona, meanwhile, has confirmed they will appeal the ban. The club has 10 days to file an appeal. We've come to the end of news now. We thank you very much for joining us. I am Thelma Okoro.